Welcome to Lemonster Access Television and Neighborhood Snapshot, a series of interview programs focused on the historical neighborhoods of Lemonster. During our program, our guests of today, the present time, through sharing their memories of the past, will create an historical record on videotape for the Lemonsterites of tomorrow, the citizens of Lemonster of the future. My name is Bob Sardelli. I am a member of the Lemonster Historical Commission. Today we are pleased to welcome to the LA TV studio Mrs. Nancy Buss Wheeler and her brother Mr. William Buss. Uh, this is Bill's kid sister Nancy, her, her baby sister Nancy. And uh, these are two individuals, two fine folks who attended the number six schoolhouse. Welcome to LA TV and Neighborhood Snapshot, Nancy and Bill. You both attended the Little Red Schoolhouse, which is located on Upper Pleasant Street at the intersection of Pleasant, Union, and Wachusett Streets. One of the neighborhood signs is there, the number six schoolhouse. The number six schoolhouse neighborhood, what comprised it? What were its bounds generally? Bill, I'll direct that to you. Where, what did the number six neighborhood include? <laughs> well, we, we um, included the Pleasant Street to the La Sterling line, and then it went up to Wachusa Street, way up, up there. <clears throat> and uh, towards Lemonster, it was, uh, what was the street that goes down? Uh, Manchester? Manchester Street. Manchester Street. And you, down to Union Street, the other. So it consisted of a, a very, very large yes, yes. Uh, area yes. Of, of town. Where specifically did you kids grow up when you were children? Where, where was your homestead? It was 807 Pleasant Street. The, and it's right the, at that time, it was a house before the number six. Number six. So it's, it's very, very close. Uh, yes, yes. To the, almost a stone's throw. Yes. Uh, to the, to yes. the schoolhouse. Uh, today, the area uh, for people who are new to Lemonster, or even people, folks who grew up in Lemonster, uh, there, are there are lots of houses, lots of streets, off Pleasant Street, Union, uh, side streets, housing developments, lots and lots of houses today. Uh, when you were children, what was the, the area like? Uh, Nancy, what do you... It was like big farms. Everybody ran big farms. Farms. Yes. and uh, farm country, hay, hay fields. And hay fields, uh, mm -hmm. lots of woods. Pretty much lots, some lots, woods. Lots, lots, some, some everybody woods. had some woods, woods yeah. right? mm -hmm. uh, Mostly farms. Mostly farms. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of uh, open space. A, a lot of the woods today, or the, the woods that are left, uh, probably were fields then. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Right, because it doesn't take long for nature to, oh, no. uh, to uh, the succession yes. uh, from, you know, for, for forest to grow up, right. from field to forest. I think it's about 10 years or so that uh, like scientifically, that, uh, if it isn't mown and, and cut. Uh, we know where you grow up, the number six uh, schoolhouse neighborhood. Uh, what, during what period in, in uh, our country's history uh, Bill, you're the older of the siblings. Mm -hmm. uh, during what years were you a child uh, in the number six neighborhood? Well, that would be through um, probably about 26. 1926. Now, you had told me in our little uh, conversation before yes. the interview that around 1919, that was World War I, yes. you were about six years old. Yes. So and then you had uh, you'd started school about that time, so you were in the number yes. six school about uh, the World War I, mm -hmm. end of World War I, yes. uh, that, that general uh, time period. Yes. And Nancy, uh, you being the youngest. I started school in 1938, 19th. and that was the last set of classes in the building. 1938, just right. at the time, and you were a member of the final class right. mm -hmm. of the, the one-room schoolhouse, the number six schoolhouse, which we'll get into more uh, deeply later on in the interview. So we've set the where and the when. Um, what was it like, uh, things that we take for granted today in, in uh, 2003? Uh, when you were a child, uh, Bill, what was transportation like? Uh, do you remember lots of cars or no, what was it no. like? 
uh, not too often you'd see a car. There, there was a uh, man that had a uh, pickup, well, a truck like a van would pick up. Uh, and when we got to going down, down to Bennett School and things like that. But there weren't a lot of automobiles around. No. no. Was it horse and horse and buggy, because, uh, horse the and wagon? They, they delivered the mail to our house. It was a man with a buggy, a the horse and buggy. Horse and buggy. He had two horses. He'd alternate the, the different horse, you know. With the, so he had a, his mail route was mm -hmm. uh, horse and buggy days. Yes. And Nancy, you remember you were older in the 30s, and there were more automobiles, but were not, there? Not that many. Still not a lot. Yeah. So in I Bill's day, they were rarities, probably. A but little bit more, but the doctor, I remember, came in a horse and buggy. The doctor came, yeah. made house calls. That's, yes, a, that's yes, a, a change, yes. <laughs> a contrast between then, uh, now and then. And uh, he came in a horse and, horse and, horse and buggy. Um, the um, trolley cars, trackless, those were, there were no, oh. there wasn't a trolley line up. Pleasant Street, because no, the, no. the, the number six neighborhood was really in the outskirts of yes, town yes. at the time, wasn't it? It was yes. really, really rural. But downtown, there would have been the streetcars or the, tr yes. the, tr uh, the, the tr tra trolleys, trackless trolleys eventually, the buses and so on. Um, did you as children get to visit other neighborhoods very often, or did you pretty much stay within because of transportation and so on in the number six area? Uh, Bill. Well, I know we visit uh, my other grandparents in North Lemonster. They lived on Tolman Avenue. How would you get up to North Lemonster from? Uh, I don't. I don't realize how I did that. Uh, but probably as a child, it wouldn't have been in an automobile. No, I don't think so. And so you either had to uh, carry. Well, I or know that. Uh, my grandparents had a horse and buggy, and they delivered milk with a, a milk cart with a horse drawn. Were, were the streets paved then, pretty much? Well, I know in front of 807 Pleasant Street, it was muddy in the spring, so, and it was really a mess. They're clear down to Manchester Street. That's quite a, that's a, that's... Yeah. Uh, so we're talking about horse and buggy days mm -hmm. and uh, a number of the streets in town still not paved. Mm -hmm. uh, I vaguely remember where I grew up in the 40s and 50s as a child, uh, the little side street next to me. I, I have a recollection of that was dirt road. Mm -hmm. So even within that time, some of the side streets weren't paved. But yes. uh, some of the major thoroughfares, like uh, from number six down to near Manchester, mm -hmm. uh, muddy <laughs> yes, at times. Yes. Um, the uh, getting so occasionally you would get to other parts of town. Nancy, oh yes, Nancy, yes. when you mostly uh, it was to visit relatives. Mostly to visit relatives. Mm -hmm. uh, what about going downtown for things like shopping and uh, things like that? Did that did much of that happen or periodically? I know Lemonster stores were open on Thursday nights. Thursday night traditionally in Lemonster right. has mm -hmm. been historically has been the the pay night, right? Yeah, and Fitchburg. It used. To, I guess it was. I'm not sure. It was Wednesday or Friday. I think maybe Friday, Thursday mm -hmm. night, Lemonster. Friday night was the big night in right. town. Mm -hmm. I think Friday night for Fitchburg. Even I remember that as a Thursday night with big big doings downtown Lemonster, mm -hmm. and that's changed because of the malls and the shopping Certainly. centers. So that's a contrast between then and now. Um, was there a, a, a neighborhood market? in the number six schoolhouse uh, neighborhood. I know that a number of the other neighborhoods did have the little mom and pop stores, but in the number six area, oh. was there a little store? No. I the don't. nearest one was uh, on Pleasant Street down near where Bennett School is now. So the, uh, that would have... It's and then there was another one on Manchester Street, a small one too. So, so am I correct that where Lane's Market is now? Yes. That would have been mm -hmm. maybe the nearest little mm -hmm. grocery store. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you had to be pretty much self-sufficient, and you went down only when you really needed yeah, right. needed something down to the downtown to the stores, uh, or for you know particular mm -hmm. items. And today we think nothing of you know with the automobiles back and forth and sure. two or three trips right. a day. Right. Um, 
Today we live in an age of modern conveniences, uh, cell phones, instant communication worldwide, cent central heating, air conditioning, washers, dryers, refrigerators, all kinds of stuff. Uh, what about then, Nancy, what about um, telephones? We had a, a, an eight-party line. So, so you did have a phone. Was it the... It was the old... Um, was it... The one that you set the hearing device inside uh, along... And you talk the into the hook, and you would have to call the operator. Yes. Oh, yeah. You'd have to through through an operator. Oh, yeah. And uh, an eight-party line, yes. which must Could have be. been interesting <laughs> it at <was>. times. <laughs> kind of tied up periodically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, what about things like we we take for granted uh, nice warm toasty houses today in the winter and essentially you know you may, you may have air conditioning in the the summer but in your family homestead how did you heat the house because we we're going wood. way back we're going we had home. wood stoves wood stove and there was fireplaces in a couple rooms but we didn't use them too much we did but i mean it was the kitchen was the center, center. that was the warmest that spot was always mm -hmm. warm and a big big uh stove oh, big but, uh big kitchen iron queen. stove yeah. iron stove mm -hmm. did it have the chrome some, yeah. Some, yeah, because my grandparents had one of those, mm -hmm. and, and they, they, it also burned coal, as I remember. Yes, but we burned uh, It was wood. dual. Yeah. Uh, and uh, did you have to do some wood chopping as a boy? I don't remember that, probably, but I mean, you just took it as a part of life, you know. That, that if you wanted to stay warm in the winter, you had to, yeah. and the chores, and uh, a lot yeah. of chores that we don't see today. That's right. Everyone... Uh, you know, the, the chore, even the chores, many of the chores have changed. Um, we, we talked about, uh, now I know that lots of people, uh, Nancy, you mentioned there were lots of clotheslines. Yes, always. Yeah. And, and there are still clotheslines, you know, yeah. sold the original solar dryers. It works uh, fine. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it works fine. But today we have the uh, laundromats and we have the washer dryers at home and so on. But you said that uh, you had kind of a special your family had kind of a special arrangement for the washing because your dad had a horse and wagon and he, he had a milk route mm -hmm. because he, the, the farm had, you raised cows and he mm -hmm. sold the milk. And what would he do with the laundry? He'd take it down to the laundry. Uh, it used to be right next to the um, brook that went uh, before Cottage Street off of Pleasant Street. And there was a laundry there. Right, and, right, a and laundry there. So the week's laundry would, uh, mm -hmm. would. so that was kind of a, that would. They'd that, bring it back and. It, so that was a help to your, to your, to my, to my to, mother, to yeah. your mom, a big help. Because yeah. I'm sure she had plenty of, plenty of, oh, of, yes, of, yes. of chores to do, plenty yes. of work to do. Um, refrigeration. Uh, what was it, uh, what was it then? I don't remember it, the first of it because, but I know the time of the hurricane and what, 30, was it 38? We had ice, or I, ice box. An ice box. N Nancy, do you remember that, uh, empty, wasn't it one of the chores to, I know my aunt Empty told, the water out from the bottom. Uh, yeah. You had to do that regularly, right? Oh, yeah. Because oh, yes. it would, that big block, that chunk of ice oh. would... All that water would oh yeah, it would go all over the place, and you'd have words over it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> if if a child didn't do that right. chore, because sure. it made a mess. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, other um, things about um, the sh the shot canning uh, was there putting up preserves. Was a lot of that a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, uh, the, the we canned everything, tomatoes, pickles, you, all kinds of vegetables. Produce, produce you oh, grew. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the canning season was a big, uh, a big item. Big item. And uh, I remember my grandmother's, and my, my mother's too, she used to do some canning. And I can remember the, the, the smell of tomatoes. It was oh, yeah. still a wonderful smell of uh, <laughs> cooking and uh, canning. And it was a big, oh, yeah. and then you enjoyed those. Through the winter, yeah. Through the winter. Yes. We always stored potatoes and apples. and. In the in the coal in the coal cellar, coal yeah. cellar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is a thing of the past, really today. Yes. A wonderful thing. Generally, you know, the, these are things that people today, growing up, because everything, you know, we have the canned goods, and we right. there were canned goods then too, oh, yeah. but uh, pretty much lots of preserves, oh, and preserving, yeah. 
preserving foods, canning was a big operation in, in the harvest season. Um, the, uh, Nancy, you had mentioned since the, it was difficult to get from place to place because there weren't a lot of cars and transportation wasn't so uh, quick and readily available as today. There were uh, salesmen, uh, oh, yeah. peddlers oh, yeah, who came peddlers. into the neighborhood. Could you mm -hmm. tell us something about that, Nancy, and then I'll go to Bill. Uh, we used to have the man came around that sold fish, and he had a horse and wagon, plenty of ice there. Um, there would be a person that would come around and sell uh, ice cream. I think he had uh, an older truck, like maybe a T, an Aunt Model T type thing, because he had uh, the refrigeration was bare basic stuff. Yeah. Uh, we also had somebody that came around to pick up uh, rags and newspapers with a big team in a wagon. And that those would be recycled. Ah, uh, yes. yes so you know, be. we think recycling is something new. Uh, it, it really isn't. But it really isn't. No. And, mm -hmm. uh, but he would have a, a set of scales with him that he would weigh everything on and pay you by the pound. So recycling rags mm -hmm. and newspapers mm -hmm. and papers. Uh, what about uh, any other peddlers? The ice man, of course. Uh, the fish man. The fish man. Mm -hmm. uh, probably you didn't have to have the milkman come up because you had your own. We had our own milk. Yeah. Own your, mm -hmm. your own milk. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that some neighborhoods there would be someone coming around selling chickens. Mm -hmm. uh, did uh, that happen up in your neighborhood, or did you grow your own chickens? Yeah, think we pretty yeah. well did our own. So you had your own. Mm -hmm. you, uh, uh, I remember some neighborhoods had a knife sharpener. A man would come around. Oh, the uh, tinker, yes, he'd come the, around. The tinker. To now repair what, pots, pans, sharpen things, you know. Uh, so. Uh, and so, sometimes he had a little side business. You could get needles and pins and notions like that from him. Uh, was there someone who, who came around peddling uh, uh, home remedies and uh, things things of that sort? Pretty much made up your own, or you called the doctor. I yeah. see. Okay, so uh, those are big contrasts between today because we go to CVS or whatever, Walgreens, whatever the drugstores mm -hmm. are, the mm -hmm. supermarkets, or here, there, everywhere, but they actually had pe uh, peddlers coming in. Nowadays, you have people peddling things over the telephone. <laughs> All right. Sometimes, <laughs> and yeah. The, uh, uh, at the, and calling it the, uh, the telephone solicitation. Right. Calling, when, especially when you're sitting down at mealtime, it seems. Um, you didn't have to worry about that then. Uh, when you were growing up in Lemonster, uh, where did it people in your neighborhood work? Where did they work? What did they do for work? Uh, let me ask Bill. Well, they had a shirt shop um, and a comb shop. And let's see, and then in later years, Foster Grant was glasses and things. Biscaloid, DuPont. Mm -hmm. uh, Biscaloid. So some people would, the men, I imagine, would go down, mm -hmm. some of them who weren't farming, would perhaps have an yeah. employment at one of the manufacturing but establishments. But no, I would say more women than men. The women later on. Mm -hmm. um, this, I think Nancy mentioned, or, or Bill mentioned in our little conversation, that uh, someone in your family would go once a week and get work from the shirt shop yes, yes. and bring it home. Was that you, Bill? Uh, who, who? That was my my aunt, my father's aunt, the my great aunt, Bertha, Bertha Bus. And she would go to clean? She'd take the horse and buggy and go down and pick up, I think it was collars, and she, she had to turn them and fold them or something, but probably press them and take them back the next day. For the, so that was home, homework. It was homework, caught, a little yes. cottage, as you said, Nancy, a little cottage industry. I, I do remember from a, another interview, or from a conversation that, uh, about an interview, it wasn't here, that um, uh, a gentleman from Lincoln Terrace uh, said that, and he was a child and there was the patent factory at the base of the terrace, and the kids used to, uh, they'd give them uh, uh, bobby pins or something that they'd have to uh, take the burrs off and this work would be done at home. So in those, and that was to get, to, oh. uh, to supplement mm -hmm the family income sure. uh, because those were not uh, those were tough times in many ways especially the the, the depression era oh, yeah. where, yes. Bill where you grew up you you uh, went through that era 
Um, what about your, your parents and grandparents, uh, your brother and sister here? What did, uh, what did your parents do uh, for, oh they worked very hard, I know, but. Uh, yes, my father was, uh, he worked with his father but he did it when, in a, when we were first married, I believe they were, he went to Framingham and, and by worked the way, in your, a greenhouse. Your, your wife Ruth, your beautiful wife Ruth is sitting in the monitor room and is watching this. Your <laughs> wife of how many years? Six, 60, 63. 63 years, so she's watching all of this. Yes, so, yes. Uh, so your, your dad worked with, the, my, with his father on the farm. They, they came back from Framingham where he worked in greenhouses there. And he worked with the Wheeler's greenhouse over on Prospect Street for a while. And then he went back with his father. There were, at that time, there were still lots of, there were, there were, there were lots of major greenhouses in Lemons. Yes, there were there yes. at that time. And they mm -hmm. were growing uh, produce lo for locally and for and plants, you plants. Know, flowering plants. And, and, and I think at one time in Lemus that they even shipped things to Boston, to the Boston yes. market. Mm -hmm. I think we were the cucumber capital of uh, <laughs> of the area. I remember reading that someplace. It could be. Uh, the uh, what about your mom, Nancy? What did uh, um, my mother when I was little uh, began working, and she ended up working for Cluett Peabody. Uh, sewing shirt. That is the, mm -hmm. uh, and plus raising family. the family, rearing mm -hmm. the family, mm -hmm. which is still. I was lucky I had job. the benefit of all my brothers and sisters to help me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bill, what did, when you grew up, what did you do for a living? You're retired now, of course, but what yeah. did you do? Well, I worked uh, with my grandfather delivering milk. I did deliver the milk and work on the farm. And very early in life, I got, the mailman said one day they're having an exam for postal employees, and he says, Bill, you're old enough, why don't you go down and sign up? So I did, and I took the exam, and I, I believe I was second on the list of men. So I got a job right off, you know. The United States Postal Service yeah. is a lemon stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Mailman. Yeah. And you had that occupation for many, many, many years. Yes, thirty something. Thirty-seven years. And uh, where was your your your, your route? Where, uh, first of all, did you drive around or did you walk the? No, road? I used to go take the bus down to Lancaster Street, and then <clears throat> I get off down at the end of. Well, not Lancaster Street. Well, the Viscoid and work back and go up over Lincoln Terrace. And it was only a four hour route at that time and then as time went on, I used to cover a different route each day. And, and so you went to uh, different sections more, of London. I got more money for <laughs> doing five routes a week instead of staying on one. And then you did, you delivered mail in that neighborhood and then you delivered mail on the west side for mm -hmm. a long time yes. too. Um, I remember as a child, uh, mail deliveries twice a day. The mailman yes. would come twice a day. So you'd have morning delivery and an afternoon delivery. Now that's a thing of the past. Yes. Uh, of course, during your time as a mailman, there were two deliveries, yes. right? Yes, but your afternoon delivery was a very short because you didn't have that much um, work, you know. So you'd cover practically the same route, same but route, you didn't have the many, the pieces of mail to deliver that many. There wasn't all the junk mail that no, we have no, today. There wasn't, that, this no, is a big no. contrast, I'm sure, yeah. between then and yes. now. Uh, I can remember as a kid sending away thing for things on cereal, you know, little things for cereal, <laughs> and waiting and checking, being impatient. Sure. I, I had to learn, that's one of the things I think that taught me patience. You had to wait and wait and wait for the little gadget or a little thing you sent away for. Sure. So I checked that mailbox, and I guess they'd come twice a day. Uh, there were a lot more mailboxes around then. Yes. I remember. And um, that's a change. And this is the age of the 37 cent stamp for a first class delivery, and it will uh, be raised eventually. Uh, in your day, what was a first class letter? Be the three I, cent. Think, I think it was six or seven cents. Yeah. 
something like yeah. that. Uh, so far back, it's hard to yeah, recall. It's, it's hard actually. to recall. It may have even been. Uh, May, 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 may have even been the three yeah, when you first started, I think it because I be. vaguely remember three, three cents and then they yeah. just, yeah. they have risen uh, significantly, yeah. and yeah. It's, it's necessary because of the, you know, the inflation and, and costs and so on. Um, and Nancy, what did you do for a living? I got married and raised a family, you know. Uh, uh, nine children? Yes. So you were very, very busy raising <laughs> that family, taking care of those, those and children. And then when I turned 45, work. I went to get my nursing degree. So I ended up in nursing. Ah, so you became a nurse after your family mm -hmm. was, uh, was, was uh, brought up. Um, as children, you attended the Little Red Schoolhouse, the number six schoolhouse. Big change. Today we have uh, the, the schools are larger, um, they're configured differently. We have the elementary and then we have perhaps uh, junior high schools are pretty much not called that anymore. The, the philosophy has changed, they're middle schools. Uh, we have the high school and so on. Uh, but as children, you attended the Little Red Schoolhouse, number six. What was it like? Now we'll start with Bill because uh, Bill, you attended, being older, you attended before yes. Nancy. Yes. Uh, what, were, what were the grades when you one attended? One through six, usually. One through six. Mm -hmm. And the desks were all uh, lined up, lined up fast the floor. Subject to change. Subject to change. Yeah. Uh, when I was in elementary school, uh, I was at the era where the desks, when I first started, the desks were still fastened, bolted to the floor. And then uh, the UN was just coming in, and it was a big deal in sixth grade that we got movable furniture. And yes. I think we, we arranged them the way the United Nations, you know, the General Assembly. That was a mm -hmm. big thing. So movable furniture. But the days of the blackboard, the days of the one-room schoolhouse, yeah. um, reading, writing, arithmetic, what were the three R's? Mm -hmm. Were there any other subjects, Nancy? We had geography and history and local geography and history and local government called civics. Civics, mm -hmm. which was a study of the local government. Yeah, how, how it ran and how, now, Nancy, Bill, you attended uh, 1919. That's when you approximately when you were yes. a little kid there, entering yes. the school for sixth grades. And Nancy, you were there just before World War II right. in the thirties. Mm -hmm. You were, in fact, you were a member of the last class right. that. Uh, attended, graduated yes, from. That's, that's correct. And when you were there, they had up through grade grade eight. Grade eight. And interestingly, you both had the same, the same wonderful same. teacher. Yes. And I have uh, a commemorative book, the number six Little Red Schoolhouse, Lemonster, Massachusetts. It was uh, produced a number of years ago. And I'm looking at the, they have the chronology, the list of, of teachers. And it says here that in 1907, a, a teacher named Elsie Powers uh, was the teacher for the year 1907. And it says Elsie Powers, Elsie Powers, Elsie Powers, all the way up. 1930, she became Elsie Powers Fisher. Mm -hmm. And in 1939, Mrs. Powers, Mrs. Elsie W. Powers Fisher uh, was still teaching there, and it says she went on after her career at the uh, number six. She taught for 32 years at number six, and then she was transferred to Spruce Street School in 19, uh, 1939, and she passed away in 1945. So she, must, she was a, a teacher with lots of longevity from 1907 at the number six to 1939, and she sounded, from what you've told me, she was, and what I've heard, she was a wonderful, warm, uh, yes. person and a wonderful sweet lady and a wonderful teacher did so many other things like making cocoa yes, on cold was, winters. If it was a bitter day and the snow was blowing and stuff she'd put on a little pot of cocoa before we went home so we wouldn't catch cold. Uh, uh, which was a, a wonderful it was. thing. Uh, it, something it, very different. Something di very different. All the teachers are warm and, and loving to the children we hope today but uh, this was a different atmosphere because it was a one-room schoolhouse where you had 
kids from eventually grades one through eight right. in the same classroom. So how as a teacher did she, uh, you know, she had to deal with all those individual differences, but she did it. She did it very well. She did it very, very well. Uh, Bill, you said something, uh, in Nancy, about uh, the famous stove that heated that uh, number six schoolhouse, yes. and it's still there today. Yes. It's, and, it's been uh, repaired many times, uh, and, and uh, it's uh, located down near the front of the school, and it goes up a flue, and the flue goes all the way back to the chimney at the end of the, right. the so building. The, so the chimney is, the, the flue is exposed yes. to get the, the gain the benefit of the heat, yes. so that, mm -hmm. uh, and it's suspended from the tin ceiling right. by, yes. Right. Yes. by wires, but that actually heats the whole building, oh, a wood yes. stove. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's still, it's still used today because the number six schoolhouse, which is no longer a schoolhouse, the Little Red Schoolhouse, is still a very active number six community center. Yes, right. And it's still used for community events, and it can be rented, and there's, there's an association, a very active association. So it's still the... Uh, that is actually the, uh, according to this book, uh, the present number six schoolhouse is the third one yes. on the site. The, I'm quoting from... Uh, this commemorative book. In 1767, the first school was built on this site. In 1792, the school was replaced by a larger building. And in 1851, the present school, which is there now, the, the, what we know as mm -hmm. the, little, the little red schoolhouse, uh, the present one was, was uh, built. And it has served well through the years. Tell us something else about... Uh, uh, I used to, when I went to Lincoln School, I used to be able to walk... I lived on Central Street, so I used to be able to, 166, I used to be able to walk home from lunch to lunch, back and forth, you know, to lunch, walk to school in the morning, walk home for lunch, watch Big Brother Bob Emery on the, <laughs> on the TV at the time, and he'd salute to the president, who was Eisenhower. I can still remember uh, President Eisenhower. He'd lift a glass of milk or something to the president, and I'd go back in for the afternoon session. Uh, both of you were able to go home for lunch yes. Yes. because you lived a stone's throw right. from, from the, school. the school. What did the other children do who came from the outskirts of the number six neighborhood? They'd bring their lunch. They'd bring the bag lunch. They, or, or, wasn't they, it, a metal pail. Metal pail, right. lunch yeah. pail. Oh, I yeah. say a ba bag lunch was my era, but uh, a me actual a, a, tin, a metal pail, right. a lunch box. With a cover. With a cover. Uh, and it probably wasn't the the modern lunch boxes that we see are all decorated. Decorated. Mm -hmm. These were uh, kind of round. A round uh, lunch pail. Yeah. Uh, literally a lunch, lunch pail. pail. Uh, lunch bucket. Right. <laughs> um, the um, you had the the traditional school subjects. Uh, today. Uh, Children uh, have the benefit of an art teacher, we hope, and a, a music teacher. And uh, although in this era of reduced, uh, you know, uh, taxes and so on, some of these very important subjects, essential subjects, are being uh, cut back. But in those days, you did have Mrs. Powers who would play the piano. Mm -hmm. And you said something about she would move the piano every once oh, in a yes, while. This big yes. upright piano. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a big for. for you know, I had four posts, like, in a row. Would you have some of the husky boys help her out, probably? Yes, but I think she could, I think she could move it move, somewhere. Move it herself. So, but it and was a, a big, big piano. So you'd have uh, music. Casters on it. Uh, you had, you, uh, Nancy, you said there was a music specialist, a music teacher who would come once a week. Mm -hmm. Yes, up, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, up from Bennett School. Up from Bennett School. Mm -hmm. Now, Bill, do you remember that? Because mm -hmm. this was prior, so this I was may remember it as happening later. I don't later know, on. but I know that she came up. She would come up. Uh, you would recite the pledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, would you have a song? Would you, would you uh, sing? Either God Bless America or the National Anthem. National Anthem or God Bless America. Mm -hmm. um, what about artwork? Uh, and another important subject, did, did Mrs., uh, Mrs. Powers, Mrs. Fisher, Mrs., then Mrs. Powers, the same lady, her maiden name was Fisher, did she do lots of arts and crafts with you? Did you do lots of artwork, seasonal things? Uh, seasonal and, and uh, President's birthdays. You did your silhouettes and put them on white paper, and 
for Thanksgiving who made up probably maybe uh, pilgrims and, and turkeys and pasted them on paper. So the traditional holidays, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, uh, Christmas, Christmas, Columbus Day perhaps? Uh, oh yeah, I think we did a ship or something ship, that way. Uh, uh, the, the holidays uh, and the seasons, you, you recognize right. those, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. which isn't always done today because of uh, constitutional issues right. and uh, various other issues, uh, sadly. Um, it sounds like it was, um, it was a really special, wonderful, warm learning experience. Being it was. It really a, was. A privilege being at the uh, number six schoolhouse mm -hmm. during your it years. Really was. Now, Bill, when you left sixth grade, you went to Bennett. Bennett, and. Uh, Nancy, when you left eighth grade in yeah. from the number six, well, you went. I left went, the first grade. I went to the second grade down to Bennett. Went went to Bennett. Right. So that's where that was the accepting school right. from, mm -hmm. uh, and you were in the last class in 1930. 38. 38. No, 38. 39. So you were a first yeah. what grade? First grade. First grader, uh, and I saw in this commemorative book there's a picture of the last class. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have the last class, and uh, you are in there with 1939, uh, the last <laughs> class at number six school. And it's uh, if we can't we can't show we we uh, show it on camera, but I see some other uh, I see Joe Churi, John mm -hmm. Churi, I see some other people, uh, B. Hardy, mm -hmm. uh, and some other people that uh, in, in which. Which little girl are you here? <coughs> I'm right here in the front row. You are the little girl in the front right. row with a bow in yeah. her hair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, long time ago. A long time ago. Uh, so warm memories of, of the number six school. Uh, recess at school, what was it like? <laughs> I know there was, there's some playground equipment up there. It's mm -hmm. been up there for years. There's a slide and there was a little uh, merry-go-round. Yes. Uh, but what did you kids do at recess? Uh, what did the oh, boys do? play ball or something like Toss that. Toss a ball around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, it, now there are houses built in the field, but uh, was there a little open area where you could play? Yes. A playground yes. area? Yeah. We played a lot of games that are now forbidden, like Red Rover come over and <laughs> all those things that damage giraffes somewhat. Oh, <laughs> Red Rover, Red Rover. Come. And uh, London Bridges, the girls played London yeah, Bridges a lot. Yeah. Um, and those kids had to, because there was a mixture of ages from eventually one through, it, you had to, you know, be really. Be careful about your size. You, you had know? to be careful about your size. Sure. And, uh, but you also had to, there must have been a lot of, co there had to be a lot of cooperation and uh, caring for each other and consideration, I would mm -hmm. think. The older ones were always careful that the little ones didn't get hurt or get too cold, or that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, recess reminds me, uh, and I have you know, fun. What, what uh, I want to ask you, what did you kids do for entertainment for fun? Not necessarily in school, but out of school. Uh, what, what, uh, what was, Playtime, like uh, I know that Nancy, you said that you I had a dog, dolls. I had a nice doll, doll collection, collection and, a, and a wicker carriage. A wicker carriage. I also had a cat I could dress up as a doll and run her around. You you dressed your cat yes. up as a doll to, to run around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, and and Bill. I know that as soon as I can remember going up to my grandfather's farm and helping with his chores and anything. They used to have to pick raspberries in season, peaches in the fall, and so apples. So it was work, but it was also probably fun because you were learning responsibility, yes, and it was yes. a big deal to mm -hmm. you know help your grandpa probably yes. and, and your dad and your grandpa. Um, I have a, a, a note here about winter sliding, double runners, and Wachusett Street. What can you tell me about that, Bill? Well, I know my father had a big double runner. Sled. And we pull it up Wachusett Street to the second hill beyond the reservoir. And we'd come down some nights. Up by the, the golf, where the golf course would be? Up as yes, far. yeah. 
And some nights you'd come down just once because it takes so long to go back up. You'd slide clear down to where the church is in, on the Union Street. The now Family was a Church. Town Poor Farm. Used to be the city infirmary, yeah, the, the yeah. Poor Farm. We'd go that far. From all the way up there, all the yeah. way right across and the boy, intersection. You would, you would fly. I can, that's quite a, from an elevation, mm -hmm. a drop in elevation. I would think it'd be, what, a couple miles? Uh, a yeah. good distance, yeah. and you didn't worry about cars coming along the road, or did you have a well, lookout? Well, it, it got to be, so you had to watch. And Eventually, you, you yes. Limit it. You, do, wouldn't do, you wouldn't do that many times. No. Um, what about uh, other things now? We have cinemas today, and we have TV, and all kinds of, uh, we can go here, there, everywhere. In a day, we can be 100 miles away from home going to, to some event with, with uh, uh, modern transportation. In those days, what was Sunday afternoon like? The very <laughs> quiet Sunday afternoons. We talked a little about this. Uh, I used to go for long walks on, nice, on the nice Sunday afternoons. Nice weather, nice long walks. Mm -hmm. Not a five mile walk wasn't Sometimes. out of the Something like that. out of the ordinary. Not, not it, really. It would be yeah. a nice leisurely walk sure. after uh, the af Sunday dinner. After yeah. Sunday dinner. Uh, <laughs> which probably was a big event then, uh, that was, Sunday That dinner. was the roast chicken that day. Was the, that was a special, very, very special meal, uh, the, the Sunday meal. Um, but lots of walking in those days, lots of walking. Mm -hmm. And it didn't do anybody any harm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice leisurely afternoon walks, uh, relaxing. It sounds very, yes, very... Uh, a slower pace. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. a, a simpler, yes. slower, but very, very... Uh, really sounds very, very nice. Um, is there any one major event or happening in Lemonster's history or the nation's history that especially stands out in your memory? Let me direct this first to Nancy. Yes, December 7th. December 7th, Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor the, Day. Uh, the Japanese. It was a very nice Sunday afternoon, mild. And we had a rose bush out front of 807 that had a late blossom or two. And my sisters and I were out there looking at it and marveling that it was that late. And my mother called from the window, something's going on, you better come in and listen <coughs> to the radio. And uh, nothing was ever the same since. Nothing since that time. Right. That was uh, our... Uh, Cutting our teeth time. Right. It's, uh, in, in a way, uh, it's, uh, December 7th, 1942, uh, history changed. 1940, December 7th, 1941. December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor Day. And November 11th, 2001. Right. Uh, you know, uh, our history changed too, right. so. It also happens to be his birthday. Which, which? December 7th. Well, happy birthday, <laughs> that's, that's, you never forget the, that day. The two go together. The two go together. <laughs> Um, other, uh, Bill, any particular event, and by the way, Nancy, you, you heard the news over the radio. Yes. Uh, Bill, mm -hmm. are there, uh, any events? Well, I remember when the electricity went up Pleasant Street up beyond to the Sterling Line, and my grandmother and grandfather had electricity. That was a big... And she had a radio. Well, we so, didn't have a radio. So you remember before there was electricity? Yes, yes. Okay. In uh, fact, we had kerosene lamps kerosene for quite lamps. a while. And so as you got a little older, then electricity came, came in, in, which was a electrification, of yes, a marvelous yes, thing. Yes. And then your grandparents had a radio? Yes. So you remember when radio first yes. came in? Yeah. Uh, amazing. I just, uh, you can't picture now not having some way of, you know, like a radio or TV or something like that. So, Bill, we can say that you went from a time when horse and buggies were not unusual mm -hmm. to the space age, where we have That's people right. orbiting That's the right. Earth, uh, we have orbiting space stations. Mm -hmm. So amazing. O over a relatively short period of time yes, yes. in history, the, the, the changes uh, That's right. that have taken place. Um, Nancy, you mentioned something about 
a memorable the memorable parades downtown in oh, Evanston. Oh, the Memorial Day parades here in town used to be fabulous. You always got dressed up in white. <coughs> the whole family went. Um, you wore a flower denoting if your if your parents were alive or dead. Uh, generally, it was a little carnation of type flower thing. So, and I remember seeing Civil War veterans marching. So, as a child, you remember. There were the big Memorial parades. Day parades, yeah. very large parades. Oh, they yes. were the whole town big turned events. Out, turned yeah. out for that. And you even remember some of the Civil War, yeah. the remaining Civil right. War, Civil War veterans. Oh, yes. Uh, they must have really been very, very elderly at that yes, time. But they, but they managed they, to they walk. They managed to walk. Right. The, the GAI, the Grand Army of yeah. the Repub mm -hmm. Republic, uh, the vets. Uh, very, very interesting. So the, the connections. They even, they even had uh, uh, patriotic floats. Made up. Patriotic floats and uh, yeah, parades. Uh, as you look uh, at some of the historical, my work on the commission and so looking some, being interested in some of these uh, old pictures of Lemister, you do come across pictures of parades, and they were really big events. Oh yeah, really big events yes. in those days. Uh, uh, wonderful events for to they celebrate were. events in Lemister's history or the nation's right. history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, with other interviewees, uh, a big, uh, and I can see why it's uh, burned in people's memories, is the 1938 hurricane. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Bill, what do you remember? Well, I remember we had to <coughs> go, go and get ice. To, you know, it wouldn't be the low, but... And, uh, it was just, uh, of course, we had kerosene lamps for a long time anyway. We eventually had electricity where we rented uh, the mail place. Why, wa why wasn't the, now, you had to go get ice because for the refrigeration of food and so on, mm -hmm. but why, why, why did the ice delivery stop? I have no idea. Was it because, <laughs> I imagine. We had got, got a Because the uh, Barrett's had the ice plant on Chestnut Street at that and time, there, and you could pick it up. And were there lots of trees across, uh, blown down across the... the road. Pleasant Street. The yeah. roads were mm -hmm. probably... Uh, yes. Impassable for, 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 for a while. Um, Nancy, uh, what do you remember about the hurricane? Well, I was home with my two sisters because... Bill and my mother and had gone down to Grange meeting in town and power went off and one of the windows got broken and one sister is outside trying to put something in the window and my sister inside trying to put something against it and uh, it just blew my sister's hair that was outside and a huge hail around her head and we all slept together in, in the living room and it blew slates off the roof and big trees uh, in the backyard came down like little twigs and it, it was unforgettable. It, it really was, was unforgettable. It was one of the worst disasters yes, in was. New England's history. Uh, today, of course, we have advanced warning because of the, mm -hmm. the weather, uh, right. the science of good. weather mm -hmm. predi prediction, but uh, it was a surprise. It was. Uh, then. Um, just before we uh, conclude this, this interview, I have to ask because I made a, a note about this, Nancy, uh, and it refers to the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, what was the incident with the braids? Oh, on the braids. <laughs> uh, across... Uh, you were a little girl. Yeah, beside the church was a, a big Victorian house with a large front lawn and a metal picket fence. And we were waiting for a, a, a unit of the parade to assemble. And of course, you're all agog because it's a day out, a day in town, it's wonderful. Somebody tied my braids to one of the pickets and I nearly took my hair off getting away from it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unforgettable, another one. Uh, these, all these memories, even now in, in the light of uh, time has passed, even that probably has, uh, is a fond memory. It's a mellows, uh, yeah. uh, It mellows with time. Uh, this has been a, a an interesting interview and uh, your recollections of your childhood and your, your uh, reminiscences of the number six uh, attending, having the honor, the privilege, uh, the fortune, good fortune of being able to attend a one-room schoolhouse. Uh, I thank you very, very much, Mrs. Nancy Bus Wheeler, and 
Mr. William Buss, uh, Nancy and Bill, I thank you very, very much for sharing your fine recollections with, uh, with us, with the citizens of Lemonster for uh, our historical record, uh, your memories of growing up in the number six schoolhouse neighborhood. And I also wish uh, to thank uh, the listening audience, the viewing audience, for their attention. Thank you very much.